Tupelo wood. I've been carving with this wood for a while now. I didn't realize they gave me such a barky piece over here. So far I have carved two things with it and I have determined within that scope of carving that it's the best wood for lure making, period. There is no argument against that. It will not be heard. This is the best wood. Why do I say that? It's light, not this light, almost this light. This is balsa. Here's the difference. That's actually not a measurement of anything, is it? All right, that's probably not going in the video, but I have Tupelo wood. It's my favorite wood for lure making so far. Let's commit to making an extremely pretty bait with this wood. First, we need to figure out what. Okay, I figured it out. Just crawl out of bed and just do some fun facts. The lure is actually done. It's hanging up over there, and I forgot to do fun facts at an appropriate time in this video, but regardless, we're doing fun facts on smallmouth. The lure is gonna be a smallmouth. I think I was just like, what's my favorite fish? It's smallmouth. And what kind of smallmouth? A glider, a two-piece glider. I wouldn't quite call this madness, but there is certainly no method. The smallmouth bass obviously is a freshwater fish. It is a member of the sunfish family. Did you know that? I'm pretty sure largemouth is a member of the sun sunfish, is it? One sec. Looking up the large mouth. Is a carnivorous freshwater game fish a member of the sunfish family? Okay, so bass or sunfish? It's one of the black basses of the sunfish family. And a black bass are erroneously called black trout for some reason. This, the things that people name fish can get ridiculous. You would think it would be a little bit more in order, you know? Like, this is this type of fish. This isn't a bass, it's a sunfish. It's from this family. Genetically, we've like took their DNA and looked, you know? And it's like, okay, they're a sunfish, not a bass. But I would call them a sun bass. A small mouth sun bass or something like that. Large mouth sun bass. Is that stupid? Probably, sorry. So the small mouth sun bass, the maximum record ever recorded for this fish in the size is 27 inches and 12 pounds. I cannot imagine. Smallmouth fight nicely too. Smallmouth have a very consistent fight all the way through. I was talking with Spencer from River Certified about the way fish fight and stuff. I would think smallmouth rank somewhere in the middle. They're not high on the fight scale, but they're somewhere in the middle. Very enjoyable fish to catch. Uh, you can use lighter tackle, walk the creeks. It's my favorite type of fishing, walking the creek and targeting smallmouth, that's my favorite. So native to the upper and middle Mississippi River Basin. Bronze back, brown bass, brownie, smallie, bronze bass, bareback bass. How about smallmouth sun bass? Smallmouth are generally brown, and then throughout the year, they can change colors. Like in the spring, they look like they're beautiful in the spring. They look like that. Just so much going on. And then there's some waters where they can just be a poop brown, and that's all they are, is brown. Maybe with some speckles of gold, you know? Gold speckled turd. I've never seen such a descriptive description of a fish. They're describing this fish so well. Smallmouth bass, generally brown, appearing sometimes black or green, seldom yellow. I'm kind of making a yellow one. It's more gold. With red or brown eyes, dark brown, vertical bands. The smallmouth I made is a lot lighter than this, but I like the way that smallmouth looks compared to any other way a smallmouth can look. The upper jaw of a smallmouth bass extends to the middle of the eye. The smallmouth coloration and hue may vary according to environmental variables such as water, clarity, or diet. Dude, I was so right. I, I didn't even read that. And I was so correct. Mar males are generally smaller than females. That's with all bass, probably. Fun facts, probably. <laughs> the males tend to range around two pounds while the females can range from three to six pounds. What about 12? Yeah, they're just describing a smallmouth so well. But all of it's pretty pointless and not need to know information. Not that any of these facts are need to know information. Habitat. They're found in clearer water most of the time. If there's a source of water that's cleaner and clearer, they go there. Um, their preference is a rocky bottom. Of course, any structure, wood, fallen trees, rocky bottom. The more rocky, the better. They'll just hide up in those things like any other sunfish would. Uh, compared to, like they're in the black bass family, compared to other black basses like largemouth and stuff, they prefer more current. They have a bit of an intolerance to dirty water and it's a good indicator of how clean your water is if there's smallmouth in it. If there's smallmouth in that water, it's probably pretty safe to eat any fish from it. That's a good indicator. And this is a one heck of a carnivorous fish. They go for the crawdads, they go for the amphibians and insects and they go for everything. So if the temperature of your water drops below six degrees, generally, those smallmouth are gonna look for deeper water. They're gonna come out of the creeks and they're gonna go find a spot in the river that's really deep or as deep as possible. 
They're gonna vibe down there. A lot of fish do that. And when I say they're gonna come out of the creeks, I'm talking, they get out of there. Up, downstream. They get probably down. I don't know. I wonder what the tendency is for a smallmouth once it comes out of a creek, if it goes upstream or downstream. I'm assuming down because it's lethargic and it's getting colder, so just drift down till we find something deep kind of thing. And then yeah, overall migration to find their deep spot, 60 miles. They find their spot, man. And Wikipedia even goes into a paragraph describing the tackle used to catch these things and what they're pretty much saying is everything. There's nothing a smallmouth won't bite. Especially if you're catching a 12 pound smallmouth, there is nothing that smallmouth won't bite. Just grab your Roman made mother chaser. Don't forget your baby musky lure, you know? That's the main reason why I like them. It's just fun to see what they go after. What you can get them to try to eat is amazing. And the size range that these fish vary to where they're aggressive, like they can be this big and extremely aggressive and they can be 12 pounds and extremely aggressive. When you think of yourself as a fisherman and what you want to catch, say you're an ultralight fisherman or you're a swim bait fisherman, it just covers so many of the ways to fish, you know? and that fish is just gonna eat anything. And then on top of the versatility of a smallmouth, like the habitat that it's in has such an effect on it. It's, if you come to Iowa and go to a creek and try to catch a smallmouth, these things can be way more aggressive than in a spot where they're just barely hanging on. They can be like the most timid, uh, not gonna eat anything until five days later kind of fish, you know? And they eat their babies. They can lay up to 21,000 eggs and then they hatch They'll just eat some of their babies. If anybody thinks that humans are the only ones that perform cannibalism because of that George Carlin joke, no. Like, most animals are cannibals, probably. So many animals are cannibals to the point where I'm comfortable saying most animals are cannibals. <laughs> Other than that, this is, this is a short page. They have some very descriptive stuff on this page, this Wikipedia page, but it's short, and that is it. Smallmouth is a fish. That's fun to catch. Fun facts are over. Super glue, man. It does intense things to things. This one. It's pretty hard to tell how much weight it's gonna need and difficult to place the weight. On the back piece, this is the only spot that I can place the weight. You would think that that would be bad, but there is really not a lot of material back here. And there's gonna be a hook back here weighing that down. And then where the material starts to happen, it's gonna have weight under it, so. I do think that that will actually be just fine for this bait, that weight placement right there. But yes, my carving is complete. I'm pretty happy I went with the pressed in scales with the mesh. At this point, it's pretty much lace, but the scales needed to be extremely small on this dude because this is a juvenile smallmouth. That's what I decided to go with. I probably just did fun facts and you already know that I'm going with that. But with the artsy fartsy stuff out of the way, we can get to some lure stuff like joint connections and installing hardware. Well, I guess painting is after this too, and that's still artsy fartsy. That bait's looking pretty fine in that viewfinder right there. Viewfinder, fine as heck. Okay, I'll get, I'll get back to work. And just like that, this bait has lead in it. And you didn't see me do that, even though I set up the perfect shot, didn't hit record, whoops. But I'm of the opinion that that's not enough lead. It's very close, actually, just feeling it. Here we go. Bait's all sealed up, hardware's in it. First sink test. I'm not expecting much. It floats. Dude, maybe I do want a surface. Cause it's floating perfect. Top water, swim bait. Wow, that turns nicely. But let's keep this top water, cause that makes it more interesting and a more fun bait to fish with five inch top water. 
glider. Small mouth, just gets better and better. I, I think unconsciously too, I'm making that decision because it's easier to not have to go through and figure out more space to put lead and put it there and hope it's good. Skip all that, have a perfectly top water sitting glide bait like this and have a bait that's even more fun. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Super glue bake soda. Okay, I'm gonna dip these pieces and then I'm gonna wipe them off immediately. Well, not immediately. Just making sure there's no clumps. I just wanna be sure that if there's anything, like if there's a spot where super glue was not, that this stuff is. That way I don't get air coming up through the wood and under the paint and into my clear coat. If you take white and black out, I see two colors on the body. Seemingly an extremely simple fish, you know? Too simple. I already know that this is one I'm gonna add too much stuff to and overdo it, but let's get on with it and let's overdo it. Starting with white. I think the next color is gold, but it's not gold in a metallic sense. It's like a if gold was not shiny. I know that's satin gold, but this stuff's way too shiny. I'm gonna go light with it. I'm, I'm not gonna dilute it with anything. I'll just go back over it with white if it's too much. Ow. Just stab myself with the needle on the airbrush. It is definitely more shiny than what's in the picture, but that might be cooler. This is cooler now because it's shiny. Next color, brown. Get ready for the brown, guys. What brown? Some detailed burnt sienna or some wicked brown. I think the wicked brown. I got detailed burnt umber and stuff like that too, but the wicked brown is the closest one, so wicked brown it is. I hope wicked brown shoots good because I'm about to go full detail mode. I don't know if all juvenile smallmouth have weird yellow tails like that. I'm putting one on this bait for sure. I like that. Should I go to the trouble of mixing it with a glow base so it glows in the dark? Ugh. Might as well. This is one fancy bait, so let's not spare any effort here. You going to bed, Fanny? That is a bright yellow. Whoa, dude. Oh, it's thick. Now it's probably too thin. Bob Saget. We'll just layer it up like a real airbrush artist. I put way too much in there. That's my solution to if you put too much in there. Here's my technique. That actually feels really cold on your thumbnail. Is that legit? That's pretty legit. I can come back in with some brown and like get close to that. That ain't too bad. Two part epoxy, clear coat. Not on a rotisserie for the first coat too. I wanna to try to preserve as much of the carving detail that I established. Established, 
that I carved out. I think by doing a drip dry once it might help to get a really thin coat on it. Too bad I can't just dip it. And that is what our bait looks like after one drip coat. A little rough around the edges still, but I do believe I've sealed everything off. Now I can come in with a 30 minute epoxy, a very thin coat of a 30 minute epoxy with a little bit of gold flake in it and put it on the rotisserie. Have it be nice and even and built up a little bit more. Give it some depth. That's gonna look fantastic. That has to be up there with one of the prettiest baits I've ever made. The paint job's really not that complicated, it's just the colors go so good together. And maybe it's too brown. I think the dark spots on this bait are a little too brown, but I like the look at the same time with a random yellow tail thing right there. It's, I think that's fantastic. Just have to get the joint connection hardware in. Using 30 minute epoxy, going all out on this lure, I wanna be certain of its structural integrity because i might be going somewhere with this lure that structural integrity is extremely required salty there's a hint yes you must use the back of a cup to do this too little do you realize the immense convenience of the back of a cup raises it up off of your work surface that's about it one side at a time and let it dry don't get any inside of the eyelet i got a little bit inside of the eyelet immediately contradicted instructions there whoops I like to go on the inside. I put the screw eyes uh, side to side like that. I don't think it really matters. I think you can put them either way. I've just always put them that way. Okay, I know I just said that we're using 30 minute epoxy because I need structural integrity and stuff and blah, blah, blah. But I always wanted to try this out. Here's my standard bottle of thin super glue. And they actually come with these, which seems very convenient because you can do this. I should probably wait for that to focus. You can just do that and dump that in there, get it all in there and then drop your twist wires in there. It's already a very tight fit, friction fit. It stays where you want it and everything. Oh! Oh, we just about had a disaster, but I saved it. I almost had a ton of super glue running down the side of the bait there. Technique established, stick it in there and just fill it up till you start seeing it to the top. That puts something in that hole that acts like what the wire is gonna be, you know? So you don't overfill and get a bunch of spillage over. That, I've never felt a glue up so perfect. That was that worked very well. Wow, you can just tell that that worked extremely well. That felt good. Why wasn't this in my life before? Once again, welcome to my bathtub. So, from the little bit that I've messed around with it while the tub was filling up, in my opinion, it is obviously an amazing Top water walking bait. It just wants to move. Like it wants to keep going forward. I think it's because the tail's so thin and it's it's super aerodynamic. I'm trying to leave my hand in the same spot too. I'm not just pulling it that way. Makes a nice little clack too. That's all I have to say about that. Nice bait. Yet another one for the wall. And it's not really a wall. It's just a piece of wood with nails in it on top of that shelf. That's on top of that bench. And with that bench, I'm thinking about starting a rod building station out here. Just spill the beans right now. Spill the beans, sorry. Uh, yeah, rod building station. I'm thinking about getting on mud hole and ordering a bunch of stuff. I'm kind of getting into that. Not that I've started that at all right now, but I'm, for some reason it's piqued my interest and I'm really about to get into that. And I, I don't know if any of that's gonna be on video or not. The beautiful smallmouth topwater glide bait. Just a little bummed out that I can't fish with it right now, but it'll have its time. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Let's get one more look. On to the next bait. 
Ow. Oh! Detail burnt sienna. Spill the beans. Get ready for the brown, guys. Need structural integrity and stuff and blah, blah, blah. Get it all in there. 